writers, agents, and publishers, for the first time since the Gutenberg Press, find themselves lost in a maze of mystery as technology alters the shape of the publishing industry. Searching for Answers is a group of writers throwing pop culture, writing, and publishing into a crucible of clarity, passion, and humor. This group is the Right Pack. Welcome back to Right Pack Radio. This is your host, David Allen Lucas, author of Science Fiction, Horror, Mystery, Poetry, and Various Articles. And with me today is... Kathleen Kayembe, I'm your co-host. I write paranormal romance under the pen name Kaseka and Vita, and I will say strange things, and I will be proud of it. <laughs> Fedora <laughs> Amos, I write Victorian whodunits like Jack the Ripper in St. Louis, and I'm president of Greater St. Louis Sisters in Crime. I'm Melanie Colani, I write science fiction, um, fantasy, and nonfiction. Uh, Brad R. Cook, I write uh, Steambunk, and i got the Orion Horseman coming out here in November, and I am president of St. Louis Writers Guild. And today's topic is going to be the storytelling of radio dramas. Now, I don't know if anybody out there realizes radio dramas still exist today. They were the high point of storytelling and of entertainment back before television came out and were still around after the television did come out. In fact, Gunsmoke was both being done in television and on radio at the same time and often sharing scripts. Um... Radio dramas, I was going to say, are still mm-hmm. around today, but they're not exclusive to radio. No, they're now now they're more common. They are on some radio stations, very few, and they are more common on podcasts. That's podcast dramas. Where else do you know them, or is there someplace mm-hmm. else? Because you got that look on your face. I do because I am in love with the uh, game designers Six to Start. They have created an exercise app called Zombies Run. That's mm-hmm. Zombies, yep. comma, run, exclamation point. And they have another one called The Walk. And both of them are essentially radio plays in which you are the main character, and you only get more of the story by moving. So you have to be That's exercising. That's an interactive game, sort of, it's slash perfect. radio drama. It's perfect, because... Um, it's an interesting one. I've always been told, like, if you want to if you want to make exercising interesting and you're just like walking or running or jogging whatever um on a treadmill or outside just put on an audiobook that's awesome for me i can listen to an audiobook whether or not i'm exercising mm-hmm. i can't do that <laughs> <laughs> so um bridging the the media gap has been wonderful for me yeah we live in an interactive time now anyway so yeah. a radio drama should be interactive at this day and, age. and i totally should be the main character Hi, but my that's, name is that's, a, that's a sort of like a choose your own adventure radio. No, I mean odd podcast type thing. No, you are the main character. There is one storyline. It's radio drama is going everywhere. Can I ask what the storyline is? Is it mystery? You're being is chased it by zombies. Being oh, chased. it's more specific <laughs> adventure. than that. <laughs> adventure. Zombies run. Um, you are runner five. You are one of the people after the apocalypse is hit and nothing really works anymore who has to run out and get supplies for this small little settlement of people trying to not die in the night (laughs) and um you gradually find out what's going on why the zombie apocalypse happened six months ago and uh what started it and why it's still going on so so it's audio drama meets meets game yes it is it is Okay. Mm -hmm. okay taking it back a little bit just a bit um i do want to announce before we get too far off there are modern radio dramas that are still that have comp, or modern productions of radio dramas that have competitions for scripts. BBC World has an annual worldwide script that they they call or a worldwide competition. They call out for scripts. Um, I believe it's in February or March. Go to BBC World, Google it. They'll and they'll give you details. But they will take the winner, they will pay to have it done completely, and they will air it. Also, too, if you are interested in writing radio scripts, on BBC World's website, they have tips and tricks on how to write it. I have you not said this before? I have. No, 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 that's awesome. I totally agree, and if you want to, I just want to throw out my personal favorite of uh, of the whole one, which would be The Shadow. You know, who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? 
The Shadow, Shadow Nose. Nose. Which one? Which, which, which is from the 1930s. Yeah. It's a radio drama from the 1930s, which is the high era of the, you know, uh-huh. uh, of radio dramas. Who was your but favorite then, actor as, as a Shadow? I've got uh, a curiosity. Yeah, that's a tough one. Wait, while you're well, thinking see, about that, premise of The Shadow? Oh, the premise of The Shadow. Oh. Okay. Well, the Shadow is, is a, I guess, one of the early superheroes. Yes. Um, so he has, he's uh, Lamont Cranston. Is Both a man, man about town. town. He sounds really yes. Crazy. He's awesome, and uh, he goes around. But then, for a time, you know, in that kind of you know rebellious nature of you know the socialites of New York, he spent some time in Tibet. Uh, actually, he spent some time in China and Mongolia and places like that as a warlord, uh, killing and pillaging the land. And uh, then was found by the Toku, who is a Tibetan holy man, who teaches him how to use shadows and manipulate men's minds. Is this Batman or Doctor Strange? Because it sounds like both and it it's awesome. Prefaces, it's before all of them. For the win. Checking this out. Yes. Yes. And FYI, in the book, it, there's a difference between the books and the audio drama. The audio drama is a lot more light than the books are. The books yes. get a little more um, gritty. And in fact, Lamont Cranston is really not Lamont Cranston in the books. He take, is a persona he takes on. He actually made a deal with the real Lamont Craston for him to leave town, basically. Yeah. Ooh. It's an interesting thing. It is. One of my, The Alec Baldwin movie's not bad, too. No, the Alec Baldwin movie surprisingly follows the Shadow so. uh, canon yeah, pretty closely. Pretty well. So, okay. The Shadow. Mm-hmm. The Shadow, the Shadow. The Here's. Shadow. And I can loan you some. I've got, I've got discs at home. I love my friends. <laughs> um, so the shadow sounds like it's been a radio drama. It's been books. It's, it's been, been a comic film. Book. In fact, it's even re- it's even been rebooted in the comic books. Yep. Okay. Think back to like you know other great ones like uh, um, oh yeah it's been done many times in film. How does it translate though? Because one of the fun things I think about radio dramas is that there are books like um, Neverwhere. Or mm-hmm. TV shows, mm-hmm. Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere, that have been a uh, TV miniseries, book, radio drama with Benedict Cumberbatch as the angel. <laughs> there was a little fandom love there, I just heard. If oh. I had seen more Buffy, I would also be really, really excited about Giles <laughs> being in there, too. Um, and radio, James McAvoy. Radio dramas can be adapted from books, from movies, and vice versa quite easily. And to answer your question on the shadow, it depends. In the movies, they talk about they'll, they'll show that maybe he steps into a shadow, or they'll shadow his face when yeah. he's doing the hypnosis. In the radio dramas, his voice changes yep. enough that you get a hint. You, you learn real quickly. Oh, he is now talking as the shadow and cannot be seen by anybody except for one person, his um, companion. Yes. Um, but as an example, and you and I talked, we all talked about this briefly before the show started. The first time I got exposed to a radio drama, and talk about conversion from a movie to an audio drama, and this goes so much deeper into the story. Star Wars. That was done in the 70s, I believe, as far as the radio drama. Definitely know what the movie was. Then they made Empire Strikes Back. Then they made Empire uh, Return of the Jedi. They were all written by Brian Daly. He was a science fiction author. He was terminally ill working on the last one. And that's why it is the shortest of, the, of all three. Um, can I give you a timeline? Star Wars, the original one, the original first audio drama was 13 hours, I believe. Empire Strikes Back was 10. And then Return of the Jedi, I think, was 6. Give or take, ballpark. But see, wow. six hours versus two hours. Hours in front of the film. And Brian Daly, I don't believe this was ever in the books. I remember reading the book. I know it's not in the movie. But his um, portrayal on the radio drama has Luke Skywalker actually make his lightsaber. Which I geeked out about. Yes, which you geeked out about beforehand. As well. Um, looks true. like it was 81. 81, okay. I just remember being a kid. <laughs> And catching, trying to catch it on the radio when I could. Um, what about Doctor Who and other things? Because I've heard the they have. Yeah, and I think it was General Hospital started on the radio too. Are yes. you serious? Yes. yes. Yeah, you've got the Phantom. You've had like all kinds of great radio dramas. Superman, and plus, if you Batman, go back, you have Lone to understand Ranger. they weren't all like superheroes. Yeah. So you know, you also had like your just 
crazy soap operas and other stuff like well, that. Well, hold it. Crazy. I was no, 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 no. I don't mean like crazy isn't bad. I mean crazy isn't good. Like, you know, you'd show up every week and there'd be this, you know. Every week. That's not your real brother. Every day. He's only a minute a day. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. get the guiding light. Exactly. Or one of these general hospitals, as you were uh-huh. talking yeah. about. Days of our lives, I think. Days of our lives. It doesn't go quite back that far, but it goes back a very long way. And I wonder what has happened, because most of the things you've been talking about started in the 30s with the uh-huh. great growth of radio yep. and continued in one form or another through movies, through books, through television. But now look, there aren't any soap operas anymore. Actually, there are. Well, okay. What's, 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 killed, what's, killed, what's the killed the soap opera? operas? What's killed the soap opera before yeah. um, I let Melanie go on and talk about the ones that still exist? It was the butler. The internet. <laughs> the internet, the internet yeah. is telling people, hey, here's information on what you missed so you don't have to sit there and watch the show. I love the so internet. So people who are working and so forth during these shows are able to come on, they're able to look at the internet or watch it streaming. Okay, there's two ways the soap opera survives. Okay. Namely, the story arcs in a whole lot of drama series are very soap opera-ish. Oh, yeah. The second way... Uh, Spanish language soap operas. There's no, actually, actually, General oh. Hospital still in the air. I yeah. sadly have to admit, um, I actually just watched it the other day when I was hanging out at home for a while. Be proud, man. Be Let proud. it be known, Brad has watched General Hospital. Let it be known too. I've also. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, there's they're still out there. Uh, yeah, I, I, I actually even I recognized a couple of characters uh, from way back in the day. Yeah. That they've actually shown up on nighttime television yes. more than anywhere else. We well, always had that. You always had your had, dynasties or your right. Colbys uh-huh. or any of that kind of weird JR, stuff from the eighties. Oh, oh, yeah. Dallas. I think they're about to relaunch. They're going to relaunch Dallas. Or well, they did. They did, and then Jr. died. So Mad 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 is basically a soap opera. Also. Yeah. Can one of you explain to me what the lights going out in Georgia is all about? Huh? Oh, okay, I don't know that one. Is the song and that was like the, the, night the lights song? went out in Georgia? I know the song. Yeah, there's a Reba, Manti- Reba McIntyre song called no. "Lights Went at the Night, the Lights Went it's Out a, in Georgia." Never mind. I will okay. find this on the internet. <laughs> okay, the internet will tell me what I missed. Go Google. Just some um, couple of other stories that are storylines that have continued from the old time radio up into modern day. Sam Spade. Yep. Um, you also had. Uh, Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Oh my God! Can we pause? Basil moment? Rathbone and Nigel Bruce. Sherlock Holmes and Doctor Watson. Can we pause? You said what old time radio? That old sounds time. like a very specific phrase. Yeah, old time radio drama is referring back to the golden age of radio. This yep. is before television came out. So, in the case of Sherlock Holmes, what's hilarious is Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce, who played Sherlock Holmes and Doctor Watson, in order there. Um, did radio, radio drama, and movies at the same time, and this was approximately World War II, and going a little after. Mm-hmm. They started the radio dramas were set in the Sherlock Holmes time period, but the movies are set in the modern day of the movie time. <laughs> so it made an interesting twist and. Dude. You know, it kind of salute to the two actors because they played fantastic. It's like Sherlock and. Actual Sherlock Holmes, Conan Doyle radio. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It really was, and um, BBC Sherlock TV show. Then, um, let's see, here, I lost my place. I'm sorry. That, um, one of my favorite ones. That he it didn't get transitioned into television that I'm aware of, but they have tried to bring it back in comic book. It's a mystery series called Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, which is all about a private uh, about a freelance insurance investigator. These, oh, um, Fedora, you had mentioned types of um, radio dramas that weren't um, specifically like uh, detective, mystery, mm-hmm. superhero, which are the ones that I would know about if I were awesome. <laughs> Unfortunately, awesome. I'm not that awesome. I'm working on it. They're Superman. David's helping me. Um, but are there other kinds that you guys can think of? Any that you listen to ever? Stuff? Oh, no, yeah. There Go are. Ahead. There are some that are a bit neglected here in our discussion of radio drama because programs like Inner Sanctum, there were lots of horror yes. shows Loved them. on yes. Golden Age Radio. Inner Sanctum? Oh, yeah. Inner think, Sanctum. Think, yes. think um, pre-version of Twilight Zone and The Crypt Keeper. 
I counted the sci-fi and the horror in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, like and genre fiction. Think about War of the Worlds yeah. was World there, too, yeah. in the 30s. That if you want to hear it. That was a radio drama. That was a radio drama. Is that everybody crazy? It was a book that was made into a radio drama. Another one. Adapted it. If you really... No. Okay, War of the Worlds is very, famous because of the radio drama. Three. That is fantastic. important information that I did not have. <laughs> three fantastic radio dramas <laughs> that if you want to listen to, follow... Two of them definitely follow the book. I'm trying to remember if the third one does. First one, Les Miserables with Orson Welles. Second one, Frankenstein. And the third one is Dracula. Okay, these are all adaptions, though. I feel like adaptations. No, no, no. You have to understand that radio shows used to be just like the movies are today. Yeah. Yeah, I remember so the pictures. Television today. No, no, the pictures so, of everybody huddled you know, around the radio. Classic literature yeah. and books a radio. got pulled into the radio shows to create the radio content the same way that classical books today get yanked in to create the movies that we'll go see okay, in the theater. Here's something else that we haven't mentioned. My favorite husband was the forerunner of I Love Lucy. Yes. What was my favorite husband? My favorite husband Elman. was a radio show starring Lucille Ball. What? Yes. And after that, they were going they basically made a TV version and she recast her husband in My Favorite Husband was a banker. And she wanted de- her what, her husband to actually spend more time at home, Aww. so she got them to rewrite the script. And the only way they would find the executives would find it believable is if they would cast Desi basically as himself. That works. So that's how we became the entertainer. Yeah. But originally, Classic. I Love Lucy was going to be just the radio continuation of My Favorite yeah. Husband. I had no idea about that. Yeah. No, no, and no. Now that was written just for radio. I had thought that you were going to say it was like a precursor to with different people entirely. No, no. no. Same. No. Overlapping people. The only one that I know of that had difference was Gunsmoke. Yeah. Because the actor who played Gunsmoke, I can't remember it, I played the marshal in Gunsmoke, I can't remember his name, on the, t- on the radio didn't translate well visually into the television. So, something about his height or something, I don't Is know. Is that why talks. people say, you've got a great face for radio? Yes. 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 People are cool and unusual. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. That's exactly what that means. So, let me, I'm going to pull this back a little bit from all these fantastic radio shows, which I'm going to tell you two things before I do. <laughs> You're going to pull back, One, but wait I'm first. going to pull back. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait. First off, there is a station on Sirius XM Radio that if you like radio drums or just want to check out without paying anything, beyond what you have to pay for for Sirius XM, um, Channel 80, I believe, is the one. It's with Greg Bell, who hosts it. Take a listen. That, that runs every day, and they have um, various episodes of vi- a lot of different ones. Also, too, look at old time radio dramas. Uh, what's it called? Old time radio um, has all the old radio dramas, or at least a good chunk of them. Oh, also there. check out your local library. Um, there yeah. are a few, and I will say that most local libraries have a lot of audio books. Radio dramas are different than audiobooks, yeah. and we need to discuss that difference and what makes a radio drama a radio drama yeah. at some point. I listened to a That's Doctor Who, classic Doctor Who radio drama from uh-huh. the library. Yeah. It was not an audiobook. Right. Yeah, and sometimes they also make audiobooks or full dramatizations, and we'll talk. We'll, we'll make sure we slide into that. We'll go ahead and explain what a full dramatization is versus okay, an audiobook full, versus radio play. Okay, so we're just done with that. Okay, a full dramatization of a book, audio dramatization of a book, is done like a radio play. You've got various different actors playing the various different characters, and the hmm. script is written. It, the script takes the play, takes the book, rewrites it into a radio play, which in a book you don't have people saying, "Hey, as one, hey, did you see that? No, I just I didn't see that. Really, did you see how that person's over there?" And they put the description that you would normally see in the narrative into the dialogue, which is actually where I'm going anyway. Um, well, well, there's another part of that. So, a, a full-blown radio production, like The Shadow okay. or any of these, one of the big major differences between an audio book or any other kind of form is a Foley artist. Mm-hmm. So, you will have, you know, if there is a crash of lightning, you will not only, they will say there's a crash of lightning, but you will then hear yeah, the, the wobbly thing that makes a crash of lightning. They the sound designers. Yes. 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 Sound, there, are what sound, there are sound is. effects in a radio drama. Yes. That's yeah. one of the differences. Yeah. That's there one of the big sa- differences. There are, there are very few, if any, sound effects in audiobooks. Yes. And some of the background. Well, what about a dramatization? And background though. music. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, several different voices. Well, dramatization is much more like a radio play. Okay. So you can have the two where it's just a dramatic reading, which is 
either one or several actors standing up there just reading out the dialogue. Or you can have uh-huh. a full production, which is multiple actors playing the different characters and fully artists and sound, you know, music and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's really the difference. Audiobooks don't do any of this. No, I've, um, the hybrid, which I don't know of, is just a dramatization. It's not quite a full production, but it's by a company called Full Cast Audio Production, and I've I've only heard their like children's books, mm-hmm. but they basically have voice actors do all the parts, but there's still a narrator that does all the he said, she said type things. That's what I wondered about, because like, I know there are full cast dramatizations of um, uh, uh, Pride and Prejudice, for example, yeah. but I'm not sure if they have, like, how do you say the very, very beginning, like the very first sentence from a character's perspective? No. Sometimes you can yeah. do the very first thing. Lot, so, um, but, but a lot of them have narrators. narrators. No, no, no. But a lot, a lot of radio well, dramas have narrators. Some can. Some so can. you'll you'll have a narrator who starts off, who introduces the scene, and they would tell you that Lamont Cranston walks into the nightclub, right? And then Lamont would come in and give a line about you know wanting a martini. So it's like reading with all the voices. Bingo! Yay! Well, okay. <laughs> and actually, it's just like reading um, with all the voices. A lo- okay. Maybe this is the reason why a lot of Private Eye books are written first person. Mm-hmm. Because, for instance, Johnny Dollar uh-huh. is written up like it's an expense report. So it's like he's reading his expense report, and that's the beginning and how you get yeah. into the story. It's hilarious cool. to listen yeah. to that. Um, I'm going to blow poor Kathleen's brain right out of her head because Hold on, I'm, I'm about having to a supernatural. No. PI expense report moment. <laughs> yeah. But are you re- here's one radio drama which I know you'll love Lord of the Rings. So, anyway, as, as um, she has, she's now kicking me under the table. I may have kicked the table. Yeah, you may have kicked the table. Here, let me do it again. Let's talk about what are some you. of the things that radio dramas can teach other writers. Dialogue. Dialogue. That is where I'm going. <laughs> Um, no, just like a play or dialogue? anything else like that, a movie script or anything, uh-huh. you know, radio dramas are really, because they're dialogue focused, they're dialogue heavy, and they're really, per, you know, the story is propelled by dialogue, so it's, it really does help you hone that craft. So hone by listening, hone by writing and realizing that no people don't talk like that. All three. By All three. <laughs> I figured you were going with another one there, so that's why I said three. Oh, All the above. <laughs> what was my third one? I no, I said I figured you were coming excited. up with one, so darn. Missed it. Realizing that the voices in your head don't talk like normal people do anymore. Yeah. I think that they teach more about plot faster exactly. than any other medium, any yep. other place that you could learn. Take, for example, some of the cognates from science fiction and old-time radio. Look at Buck Rogers in the 21st yes. century. Uh. Look at uh, Terry and the Pirates. And then look at Guardians of the Universe, and you could see <laughs> exactly yeah. where yeah. The, the grandfather the yep. was oh. of Guardians of the Universe. Guardians There's a direct line. Absolutely. Please explain this direct line, because I loved Guardians of the Galaxy, and I, I like. The okay, humor, so if so you want to take it back to the beginning, you please. have to go back to a, uh, two incredible radio dramas that got yanked up into the movies, or actually up into the little shorts that they'd show before movies, and then got made up into the actual movies, and then got tossed on television, and have since faded away, and they need to be remade. So you have Buck Rogers, which you know, for a lot of people will be familiar with the 1980s television show. There. I only know the name. Okay, well, Buck Rogers uh, is a guy, an astronaut from today, who got sucked up into the 25th century uh, through a time tunnel-y thing. Or he got frozen in space. Or he got, yeah, that was it. He got frozen in space. Yeah. Thank you. So he ends up in the 25th century where he's got like a jet pack and laser pistols and all that kind of fun stuff. Mm-hmm. And then he goes flying around saving the day because he's, you know, from the a 21st cowboy. century a cowboy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's Buck Rogers. Flash uh, Gordon. And then the other one is Flash Gordon. And Flash Gordon uh, was created and in, in is really one of the, the classic sci-fi worlds where you have uh, an American, uh, depending upon exactly the incarnation, we're going to go with the 80s movie here, and the, the football player who gets sucked up uh, on into this alien world and has to then fight Ming the Merciless uh, who is a crazy villain and each one of the planets in Ming's universe has uh, a different type of alien. Stargate! Kind of. Similar. uh, Did you watch Voyager? Way, 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 way back when. Okay, Star Trek Voyager, there was an episode that was an homage to... Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon. I just yeah. highly recommend seeing the 1980s movie where the soundtrack's done by Queen. I, have, I was listening to that song in my head just now. Yeah, yeah. Flash. Yeah. Flash. 
Go see down. everyone else. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> quick, sorry. <laughs> um, to continue what Fedora was saying about timing and telling of a story, a lot of those stories that were told on radio dramas were either 15 minutes to 20 minutes, depending on how many more commercials they had. They were usually scheduled for a half hour. Very rarely did you have a full hour radio drama. Sometimes yeah. you did, but even when you had an hour, by the time you threw in commercials, just like modern day television. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate. Yeah, you did have. I've always been there. You've always been there. You did have that was very the first tight radio program time. ever. Did you know that? It was what? a commercial, a 10 minute commercial. Does really? not surprise me. No. Yeah. Um, Somebody had to pay for that. At least they were being creative. <laughs> Going to be really geeky real fast here, now that we haven't already been. But um, it is said that Gene Roddenberry, the, the great bird of a galaxy himself, the one who created Star Trek, would listen to television, supposedly, with his back to it, to learn um, dialogue. I wonder how much of that is myth, if it wasn't radio dramas he listened to, because... You could do, and you could do it either way. But with a radio drama, you're getting more of a description in the dialogue versus. Um, I don't that. know. Uh, I once, when I was a kid, I was uh-huh. actually with my tape recorder recording Star Trek and listening uh-huh. back. They have really good sound effects. There was an ep- the episode that I ended up recording uh-huh. was the one where the Enterprise gets blown up four or five times, and they keep getting. Okay, you're talking next generation. Next, next generation. Gen. But the point is, they were playing this poker game, and uh-huh. you can hear them shuffling the cards uh-huh. and doing all these things, and I could picture it in my head from the sound effects. And I didn't even notice the sound effects when I was watching it. So, mm-hmm. that, I was wondering about um, the way. TV shows. I don't, I don't know if they were more dialogue heavy before, like during the transition from yeah, radio. I think from to the oh the really transition, the very first, they did them both at the same time. So they were filming live no, and doing the, a radio. Well, the television version time. being more dialogue heavy. Yeah. Well, television kind of goes through an arc. So television starts out very much like a play or a radio drama in the sense of you have a set, you have actors coming onto that set. Think of like any of your Ward Cleaver type, you know, black and white shows from the fifties. You know, it's generally a set of the house, and then people interact in that set. And generally, it's a long shot that sits there and doesn't move. It's a static shot. You don't have these quick cuts back and forth from one person talking to the other. You know, that's all taken directly from the stage and from radio play. And then just put onto television. Now, eventually, they figured out they can use the camera to tell a story as well. That starts to happen in the 60s and really comes up through, you know, kind of the 80s and the 90s and what we have in modern you know, storytelling. Now, it started in movies before that because most TV was un- un- actually broadcast live at first. Yeah, right. So that's much like a play. No pressure. Yeah, yeah. if you ever go back... I'm, <laughs> it's I'm, not I'm, just I'm, this I'm, audience, guys. I'm it's jumping shark here. I'm jumping shark here a little bit. But <laughs> if you ever go back to the original television show of The Dark Shadows, which is the one that Johnny Depp watched, and we won't talk about his movie, in my opinion. But anyway... Um, that, that, no. that originally you can see where they were filming it live and then the next day's episode because this thing was a soap opera they had to redo the ending of a previous day's episode and you can see the differences one of the things that I think is fun um, with films uh-huh. specifically I'm thinking of one of the Blade films I think it's like the second one or something I don't know one of the behind the scenes sections they have is the sound designers and all the things that they mix together mm-hmm. to uh-huh. make for example a vampire exploding to ash there's like 50 <laughs> yeah. things in that one sound uh-huh. and uh, I'm I'm wondering like is that something that they did with radio dramas oh, yeah. to that oh, extent God, yeah. or is Most it like definitely. a lot well, it's something you do with, with it's something you do anytime you need a, a sound expert or foley guy is that like so with a radio or with a play or any of those kinds of things, anytime you need that sound, it can be made various, various ways from there were crumpling up paper. Involved, yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, no, totally. I mean, I was in a play once, and our gunshot was the clipboard, like the the, the clip on a clipboard. Huh. You pull it back, and you just let it snap, and it just made this huge echoing like bang. Totally sounded like a gunshot. So for a play, that was our gunshot. I hope you all ducked. Well, the Those of us duck? on the, you know, you couldn't duck if you were the actor, but I don't know what everyone else is doing. I was on stage. They were on the ground. Real quick, while everyone's been talking, I'm going to let Fedora go in next, but I need to make this correction as soon as I can. I mentioned before a website being Radio Classics to find that place. I am wrong. It is radiospirits.com. We will flog him. Do not worry. That's <laughs> will. 
vlog him. We will broadcast it live. You we will vlog his vlogging. No, 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 no. We will broadcast the sounds. Start screaming. There you go. Ah, ah, yeah. okay. Sound designing. We have little kids walking around this bookstore, so. Okay, go ahead. One of the most interesting and telling things, as far as I know, mm-hmm. about radio drama is the way that it ends with cliffhangers with a desire yes. to come back the next day. It is is Carol guilty. really uh, pregnant? Yes. Yes. Will Johnny go to the hospital? The, the they were just week. absolutely yes. great about that. Or tomorrow. Well, oh. what you got with the, the uh, variety shows and the comedies was closure with Radio drama, we got cliffhangers, we yes, got we serials, did. and we loved them, and I still love them. Oh, no, and it, you are so right with that. It is a beautiful way of not only teaching the cliffhanger, but teaching people how to write a serial. Absolutely. You know, how, how to write a series, how to keep that next episode coming, because it's so true. I mean, oh, radio was so good at it. They even had, like, music and same bad time, same bad channel kind yeah. of stuff. Oh, big time. Before we go further, I want to go back to sound effects. And for anybody who's a screenwriter or radio play writer listening, and they want to know, in, or you're an amateur and you want to put up your own audio podcast, how do you discover some of these sound effects? Um, I mentioned before about the Series XM radio show, a radio channel, channel dedicated to old time radio classics. Ever so often, Greg Bell, who's the host, will talk about sound effects and how they did them, including, I think it was for War of Worlds. Don't hold me wrong, but it's definitely Orson Welles, where they were recording in the bathroom in order to create certain sounds, and they were laying, yeah, they were laying underneath by the toilets. Pickle jar it was yeah. in the toilet. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was just gonna kind of uh, twist this around a little bit to Please. come into audiobooks for writers, uh, which is kind of the big one of today. Of course, you can do an audio drama, and you can do an audio show, you can create your own podcast radio show if you want. Uh, Actually, that'd be kind of fun. Might do that. Anyway, uh, but one of the big things for authors is the audio book, um, which, as we kind of described earlier, has a little bit less of the production. It's generally an actor reading your stuff. Um, and if you're so interested, I just wanted to throw out audible.com. Uh, it's going to be a great place not only to buy books, but uh, more importantly, they have the audio recording side where you can team up with an author or uh, an actor who will speak your book and then you know they'll do all the they've got the professional acting chops and they'll read it beautifully uh you can pick from a huge selection of actors and then you guys split uh the profits of that book and too bad uh tw finley isn't here yes. because she's actually used the service yeah she's got several audio books and out it's there, too so. bad matt isn't here because he's been a voice actor for the service yeah what mm-hmm. yes oh I so many people to kill about yeah he talked about that <laughs> thursday thursday um, I wasn't there. That oh, was yeah. my fault. Why? Yes, I unfortunately do not have the voice for book talking. Yes, you do. No, I've got depending on issues. the plot, on yeah. the part that you get. No, you have to clip out all my breathing. You it's could, weird. if you were in like the Blair Witch Project. This book, is why you need voice actors because they they have the right voice to do it. If They've you got have that breathing things though, that's actually, perfect. Actually, that um, voice. Actually, what Matt said on Thursday mm-hmm. is that uh, he was really wondering about that because he was having, this was the first time he had actually done an audio book, and he was saying that he needed a whole lot of editing because he had to breathe. Yep. <laughs> yep. Breathing's important. Lib- yeah. Uh, LibriVox? LibriVox? Uh, LibriVox? Yeah. Learn to breathe silently. LibriVox. LibriVox, yes. I've listened to some of the recordings, but it was years ago. They, um... They record, they have volunteers reading... Um, oh. Public domain books. There we go. And all their works are in the public domain. Yep. And some of them are really good. And they they organize everything so that you know people can read audio books with other people, as in like one person does a chapter, one person does a chapter. One and would you put their their in, their website online? Because I can never spell it right. L i b r i v o x. Yes, but is it? dot com dot org I dot think they're dot org but I would Google that yeah. they're the only ones that are called that yeah so you should be able to enter that oh and I would up. recommend I like um, audio a book uh, essay by Mark Twain mm-hmm. uh, the I think the essay is entitled the often German language and it's writ- read by someone with a thick German accent mm. oh. you know what one of my favorite audiobooks is it's real short it's read by Samuel L Jackson it was not originally published <laughs> With a giant press until everybody found out it was wonderful. Mm. Go the F to sleep. It's a oh. kid's book. Oh. He is so funny. Yeah, I actually know that. That is actually really fun. 
It's an amazing read. Sorry. That's We're not, having... Is that an audio book? Oh, yes, it is. Okay. It's a, it's a real book. Yeah. And Samuel L. Jackson reads it. And it's amazing. Well, I'm curious. When do you all listen to books? Or radio dramas or anything like that? Car. In the car? What about myself, you? Basically, almost any time. Car, when I'm at work, um, if I'm working on something that doesn't require my full detailed attention, shall I say. Um, exercise. I had to laugh as I'm thinking when you were talking about that, Kathleen, you know, you would just ex- exercise the books or whatever. And I'm exercising one time doing weights to um, The Prince by <laughs> Mac Lavelli. And you can, and if I take aside my earphones and I'm listening to other people just cranking out whatever, I'm like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> kind of twisted. Kind of twisted, yeah. yes. Good I way. Know. Always, Appreciate you know, come on, that's me. No, I would, I would, um, I also like audio programs when I am around the house doing busy work and I want to be yeah. hearing something that is awesome. Uh huh. Learning stuff. I mean, you Same can only yeah, sing I, for so long. And I like listening to audio books again at work when I'm not listening, when I don't need my full attention on it because if I do get involved in something or someone comes in and you talk to them, you can rewind and listen to it again. That rewind 10 seconds, rewind 15 seconds in the Overdrive app, the library lets you yeah. get audiobooks that way, just straight to your phone. That rewind 10 seconds button is my friend. You're like, oh my gosh, the dog just started barking. Oh, what just happened? Well, yeah, and I also go back chapters. I also listen to them as I'm falling asleep. So it's like, okay, it's to the end. What's the last section I remember? <laughs> This was the part that invaded my dreams. I was wondering about the pancakes. I don't usually think of them. Red Riding Hood I do, though. Oh, okay. for anyone that's local, I believe it's the St. Louis County Library System has the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. They have both the audio dramas and the books for um, the Hitchhiker's Trilogy. And listen to them both. They're not the same. Kathleen might be checking out right now. To <laughs> <her phone. laughs> yeah, Kathleen did but not check the for point that. is, the, <laughs> but a Douglas Adams, uh, I believe some of the best the audio dramas you can't download them to uh, Apple for Mac. You have to do it from a you know PC computer. But um, it's fascinating. Some of the I think the audio dramas might have been before the books, or at least part part of the books, and at the end of one of them, I don't remember which one of the audio dramas, there's an interview that gives all sorts of background and the wackiness, because they were originally recorded on eight-track tapes. So they had people in eight different rooms, including somebody in a closet, because they ran out of sound stages. Oh my gosh. Which is just so perfect for Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That really is. <laughs> <laughs> and when they were writing it while they were recording it. That's even more, oh my gosh. There was um, one of the, I think, Academy Awards things. Um, Doogie Howser. Why am I blanking on his name? I never okay. saw Doogie Howser. Neil Patrick Harris. Else. Neil Patrick Harris. He was doing um, a rap at the end of uh, the award show with all the winners' names and stuff, and they were writing it as stuff was mm-hmm. going on on stage. They were like, okay, what do we do with this one? What do we do with this one? This guy won that. And, and, and yes. Yeah. The end. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, Doogie Howser, uh, Neil Patrick Harris is interesting because his agent wanted him to sue somebody for taking out his image, and instead of suing them, he said, hey, can I play that bit part? <laughs> they were going to have an impersonator play him, and he volunteered to play the guy. That's because Neil Patrick so, Harris is awesome. Yes. <laughs> Let's draw back to... Draw actual, back to radio dramas. Yeah, radio, radio dramas or audiobooks. Audiobooks. Uh-huh. Adaptations. Podcasts. Yeah. Podcasts. Go into podcasts, because I don't do any of the, the behind-the-scenes stuff for... For this, but I'm yeah. guessing that you could do something similar with. Yeah, you could. Radio. Well, we could easily just sit around here doing our own radio drama right now. I mean, all we need is a script, and then and you take a character, effects. and I take a character, and you know, you take a character, and, and maybe you know, yeah. we oh. all do some sound effects. Like we all get that one thing we do, and and then when you need like a gunshot, then you just hit the button, and boom. Or no, we could. When put you need those lightning, you afterwards. We could layer the sounds in. You can layer them in afterwards. Yes. You can do them during. The radio drama, which is how it was done. Yeah, I kind of like when it's all there because yeah. then it's you know you you've got you get, that get all. your own real real reaction to it. Exactly. For yeah. the record, I'm going to propose we do this for like five minutes after this is done, just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> so it's out there, you guys. Really, we can't write this up into a future episode with the right pack with a radio drama. I just want to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> we never do this future episode. I'm getting a lot of shaking heads here. Oh well, sorry guys. We can do that. We later. don't have a script. 
Yeah, Unless you have, have one on you. Oh my gosh, are we all writers or are we all writers? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, well, writers. <laughs> yes, you can but get sound. Fun. If you do do a, if you do do a podcast, you can get various sound boards on the web. Yep. And you can buy the sounds. You, you can, can make buy the your sounds, own sounds. Make sound sounds. And really, I think sometimes You're a fun, GM. I think sometimes it is fun to make your own sounds. I mean, okay, being geeky again, Star Wars, um, the sound of blaster fire. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah, the, the theme <laughs> is pew pew pew. Yeah. You know, you know what that was actually. Uh, what? Yeah, have you ever looked at the metal? cable that comes down to hold a telephone pole in place. That was a sledgehammer applied to said wire. Was that legally done? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Then I can officially say it's awesome instead of just unofficially. Yes. That's really cool. <laughs> and so you can mix and match that way. Um, the sounds for Chewbacca, yes, I know I'm being geeky, but what the hell, is you know what, who you're what was with, that? Right? Yeah, I know. Okay. Bear, I'm t- but the audience doesn't necessarily. The bear was a bear, a lion, um, hey, elephant, multiple. No, it's an elephant, a bear, yeah. and a lion, and there yeah. might even be a couple more shoved There's in there. There's got to be yeah. something else in there, too, because it's got the, 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 well, trilling. it's all mixed together and then manipulated after that, too. Right. So, basically. So, it's a whole craziness. Uh-huh. A it remix. cannot be made Sound design by is human a remix, noise. which is what musicians like, do Like, you the can't time. go up to Peter mm-hmm. and say, Peter Mayhew, and say, can you do the Chewbacca sound? Because he doesn't make it. Yeah. So, it, it's just, it's not a sound that can actually be done, even though millions of us across the world can do one. <laughs> My heart, it brokes. Is Sorry. But you can still make it, kind of. My English, just, it's, it it's not gonna be, too. You know, but if you are going to do a podcast, which... There's a lot of companies out there. Um, some are non-profit, some are for profit, that do podcasts, and you can get them on. You can get their podcasts. I've, I know I've run into a bunch on iTunes. One of my favorites for a while was Pendant Audio, but they have their sound effects, and you can, if you want to do your own, play, create your own sound effects. As Brad was saying, take a clipboard. You might be able to make your um, gunshot. Take a piece of. It's the metal sheet metal. that makes metal. the wobbly uh, yeah, thunder and lightning. Yeah, those are awesome. lightning or thunder sound. Or you could record real sounds in the community and then play them back. But that's a huge you know, sampling thing. That's yeah. actually a huge mm-hmm. thing in the music industry. So go yes, around and record like a telephone mm-hmm. ringing or go around and mm-hmm. record like, you know, different sounds and then mix them all up in a sound. But, yeah, but so. FYI, sometimes a real sound doesn't sound like itself on radio mm-hmm. or on the audio. Like people speaking doesn't sound like no, people no, like speaking. Pu- um, it's no, I mean too like flat. Yeah, it's too flat. Really? Yeah, something about it. I forget what details are. Which is why doing it in the bathroom is a better idea, or where there are hard uh-huh. surfaces. Acoustics. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the acoustics that change things. A yeah. lightning in a closed space sounds more like lightning than lightning outside. If you guys were going to make a radio drama of which some kind, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is why I'm asking uh-huh. in part, uh-huh. but there are three other people too, so I get to yeah. know yeah. more stuff. What genre would it be? What would it be? What about? I'd go for the classic, you know, superhero, you know, types of like the Shadow or the Phantoms or one of those. Maybe even Buck Rogers. I've already started something for a radio thing that was, oh, I think it was Werewolf, I think. (gasps) Yes, it was. There was a, was it a fox? It might have been. I don't remember. It's been too long. I have it somewhere. There was a fox and it was in the road. I remember this. Okay. It might not have been a fox. Could have been a wolf. Okay. It was dark. Yeah. Okay. It was dark, guys. I was there. Yeah. Okay. It was okay. dark. I couldn't see. Well, I think dark is good for a radio drama. <laughs> <laughs> that mystery would be great, or horror uh-huh. is what I'm. First go for. person from a blind person point of view. <laughs> because Ooh. what is that? You know, the dark is scary, and you can be much more scary. I think on the radio than you ever can with yeah. pictures. Oh, most definitely. And because you can't it's see. in people's brains. The key is to give them see. enough details and hence for the imagination to fill in the holes. Mm-hmm. That's why Alien, the film, worked so well, in, especially like in the first one, because you couldn't see it. You could hear it, and right. you could see the effects of it. Like, well, I think sometimes sound is so that. much more mm-hmm. horrifying yeah. than visual. This is why I don't find any of the paranormal activity movies scary. Yeah. Because, because your imagination a chair can do sliding worse. like after five minutes of just staring at the t- at the, you know at the movie doesn't scare me. 
However, you, you know, have this alien that I don't know is there that I can hear and I hear the music tingling and all that kind of stuff. That builds me up for that scare. Someone is going to die. Someone's going to die right now. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I can't watch, I can't watch. Exactly. Inner Did Sanctum. Someone, is someone it was just oh, a squeaky yes. door. Yeah. Ooh, that would send chills uh-huh. down my spine. Oh, and you didn't know about the War of the Worlds? No, I didn't know it was a okay. radio drama. Yeah, it yeah. was. I forget what radio hour it was. It was... Uh, um, Yes, I yeah, but it was part of a regular or, radio. Or Lux Radio, I'm not sure which. In any case, it was part of a regular radio story drama where they did a different type of story every week. But this one, Theater, they started out with music, mm-hmm. then they broke in like it was a news report. And they played it like a straight news report. And that's why people panicked, because these were the days <laughs> well, that... here's the best part. So they did that. run a disclaimer in the beginning and at the end that this Sweetie, was a radio drama. Sweetie, we have the internet. It's spelled out for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, but not when it first People aired. don't pay attention now. <laughs> but they said, like, before the radio started, they said, we're about to run a radio wow. broadcast, you know, and everything like that. And then Orson Welles came on, and they ran with it that way, I and people still Orson freaked Welles out. radio hour. Mm. Real quick, just so, it, so that everyone has information on it. War of the Worlds was done on the Mercury Theater on the air, which was performed as a Halloween episode on the series... October 30th, 1938, which, if you go back in time, 1938, things were starting to move in World in directions. Europe for World War II. Um, yeah. Dear aliens, if you ever plan to invade, Halloween is a good, good, good idea. <laughs> and no one will believe oh, you. But War of the <laughs> Worlds April Fools. has actually caused panics more than once. They've yep. replayed yes. it in other countries, and it's caused no, no, they did a rebroadcast uh, in the fifties. No, 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 no. Oh. like the nineties or the two thousands or something. They did a, back they did a video York version. And it caused it again. Oh, that I oh. You know, they no. definitely did one in 1968. I remember the movie version, the video, the TV version of War of the Worlds uh-huh. in the 90s. Okay. They ended up after about the second, before every commercial break, mm. they said that this is a fictional show. Uh-huh. They had all sorts of clues that this wasn't really real. Mm. Oh, and please. Discovery Channel does the same thing now with their, like, In Search of Megalodon or whatever. Yeah, but the point is... Mermaids. After, uh-huh. after about the second or third... Megalodon has spoken, Charlie. Yeah. After about the second or third commercial break, they started running a thing along the bottom saying oh. that this is fictional. Yeah. <laughs> so it's apparently easy to confuse people. <laughs> apparently so. they're doing really good work, though. Yeah. I mean, if people think it's real, you got to be doing something right. Well, I think people Frightened had their right. brains just somewhere else anyway, yeah. because there's no way the timeline would possibly work in an no. hour show that Actually, they deploy they all, <laughs> they all, all jokes, kinds of police yeah. and soldiers yeah. to Actually, some remote Do you think uh, we wouldn't place? have cameras on everything at just the right <laughs> angle yeah. with the right dialogue? That no, is, no, no what? Well, down, there's no cameras. For, the, audio. for the 90s no, the, the one person. that worked, for the audio one, it actually worked better time-wise because this had happened in the past and they were going to interview someone and then when the reporter was there to interview something, something was happening right then. Yeah. Oh my gosh. In oh the old gosh. time radio drama, there's the one, movie. I don't know if it was a reporter, I think he was a reporter, but is like the last survivor or whatever. And by then it's pretty clear you're listening to an audio drama, not to a uh, Oh, and then the last part but is kind of a summary the, after the break is like sort of a story, more story of what happens. When we last... I'm sorry, was that the movie or the radio? The radio. Okay. Heroes. Yeah. No, it wasn't so much that. It was he came back and it was very often a story because that's when the time expanded out. And you know it's not just an hour, it's weeks later, you know. Okay. And also, too, they had also, just right before that part, come out and said, just a reminder, this is a radio. This is false. This is fiction. This is a test. This isn't a test. This is just a story. Yeah, this so isn't a test. Day. It is real. Oh, and at the yeah. end, Orson Welles came on and said, this is our version of a Halloween joke, and we came on and said boo. And there were congressional yeah. hearings and all sorts of oh, things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh, people. People. Oh, people have never changed. No, we haven't. <laughs> no, like, this every channel is literally still pulling this to this day. Well, no, I think we do that with the internet all the time. Like, that oh my too. gosh, that really happened. Oh, okay, no, no, I think that was a joke. I think yeah. I'm going to go check this out to make sure it was a joke. Uh-huh. Yeah, there was a, a couple years ago, there was this thing that a whole lot of people thought the Earth was going to be collided by another planet, Naboo Nemesis. or something. Nemesis or something. Oh, something like that. But anyway, Did you say Naboo? No, 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 no. Nemesis. Nebu. 
Yeah, she said Naboo, but Nemesis is what she meant. Princess yeah. Amidal is. Yeah, Thank that's you. What that's what, what it six. was. Jar Jar. Yeah. Jar Jar's coming in. <laughs> Jar Jar's coming in. You're leaving now. <laughs> it is Jar Jar NATO. But I thought it was. Sub- okay, well, anyway, anyway um, we're for way some off reason, base. more <laughs> deadly than sharks. The, um, to the end. NASA's bo- Ask yeah. a bio- Biogenist, of Exobiologist, mm-hmm. somehow he started getting all these questions, and he actually put up a YouTube video, and his, his YouTube video got like a tenth of the viewings of. Yeah. Okay, I need, fair, I, need, I need to draw this back to, to the radio fair, drama though. for the last five minutes here. Yeah. To be fair, that kind of thing happens all the time. Yeah, yeah. it does. Just no matter what. Like. It even happens in books. I mean, look at the Hitler Diaries or something like that. Wait, what? I'm sorry, you said that, and I was like, the Nanny Diaries. No, 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 no. Okay, so back in the 70s, there was this huge thing about the Hitler's Diaries had been found, and there was a whole thing. They were going to be yeah. It turned out being a hoax. hoax. It was a huge warning, hoax, hoax, hoax. hoax, They did not have the internet to tell them this. No, they didn't. But that just shows. I mean, you know, at any moment during time, you can fool the people into believing something, a story. It's one of the things that radio dramas are really good at. Because they're being portrayed, because there is no visual to it, because there is, you know, this sense of being able to just lay out a story in front of somebody and they're hearing it so it's compelling and they're being drawn in. And everyone can infer different things from the incomplete facts provide the incomplete information can be drawn to make sense to everybody in different ways. Yeah, it's it's a really big fa- like facet of not only storytelling, you know, something we're all trying to do with books we create, but with radio dramas specifically or even audiobooks, you know, that, that sense of of the immediacy of it because it's being broadcast right then you're listening to it right then it's raw it's not like a book where you're kind of absorbing it on your own terms you know so there there is kind of a a visceral sense of what the radio drama can bring to the written word that the written word can't necessarily do for itself so um we've mentioned dialogue and and Mm -hmm. pacing plot and pacing yes Mm mm-hmm does that count and then we went way off yeah no but like as things that radio dramas listening to radio and yes very much so oh filling in the blanks as writers filling in the blanks Uh, yeah so for instance um as a creator of radio dramas makes you think about sound effects a lot well there aren't sound effects in a book but you can think about what kind of sounds people are hearing um Uh say for example say somebody say somebody's walking no uh, say somebody's walking through leaves if you were writing that you could say Kathleen walked through the walk through the leaves to find the body crunching her feet on all of the piles because they were fun but then what is the crunching sound and you know how do you say that without ever how do you convey that you're walking through the leaves without ever mentioning leaves well, you sound talk design. about the crunching you talk about you and know, fall. The fall but that's that's just that it nature. you can't for a radio play you would actually do the crunching yeah. for the audio or for a book you need to write about the sounds you don't actually hear the sounds. You right. write about the and sounds, and you don't mention the leaves. For a film, right. or you or can actually like do both. I mean, well, you, you could. could. <laughs> it is possible to reinforce, also. Very much so. Depends on how but important in the is. book, by listening to the audio dramas, you can come up with different kind of almost like a thesaurus, like I was saying, how to describe. Yeah, it should remind you. You know, when you're writing that book, you got to put, you have to put the the sounds in there. You have to put all five senses in there. Why? So that if it becomes a radio drama, all five senses are then on the radio drama. If it becomes a movie or if it becomes a TV show, all five senses are there. So it's really helping you remember to include all five. It helps for the the reader reader to get it viscerally instead of just intellectually. Exactly. I was going to say, like, Fedora, you had mentioned that just the door creaking in a horror radio drama would be enough to send shivers up your spine. And it's because, I think... um, our imaginations are so much scarier than anything that we could actually sure, yeah. see. When you see and it, our like, own experiences yeah. that we're bringing to it. Yeah. So it sounds like radio drama then also helps the us tap into the fear those. is worse than the fear mm-hmm. itself. Mm-hmm. As all the co Exactly. Um, Alfred Hitchcock would say, mm-hmm. if, you, if it's better to show the gun than show somebody being shot with the gun. So that's not exact phrasing, but the the yeah. Um, one thing, though, with people watching, including me, so much TV, I tend to visualize the story. This is how it looks. Well, listening to radio, you think about how it sounds. So, like, I, I wrote a short story, and the whole short story played out like a movie. So how would you do it? But, again, if you're thinking auditorily, that's a different type of story. I think Stephen King, in, on writing his book, um, on writing said something about like a, the, the, the four, three or four 
details that would hit you as you walk into a place. Those are what you want to point out as you're describing having like gone in somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like what would you notice first? What yeah. were the big things? Radio dramas would be good at that. Yeah. Just, yeah. Very much so. And inferring. Inferring is what you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Getting people to infer. So if you haven't checked out the fa fantastic world of the old or the new radio dramas, and you're a writer, you'd be a, a book writer, script writer, whatever, and you want to get more detail, or you want to learn dialogue, or you want to learn plotting and pacing, check out the old time, check out the radio dramas. Listen to a bunch. There's a, there's some for almost every kind of person you could be, and you can kind of fan, and I can guarantee you, you'll find something that you will enjoy. And now on that note, thank you for listening, and join us next week for the Right Pack Radio. The Right Pack would like to thank STL Books for allowing us to record in their bookstore. STL Books and Gifts is St. Louis's newest independent bookstore with an emphasis on fine literature for adults and children and the most comprehensive selection of St. Louis books available anywhere. Visit them online at stlbooks.com or in person at 100 West Jefferson Avenue, Kirkwood, Missouri, 63122. Tune in next week as the Right Pack will conquer yet another pondering issue in the writing industry. Theme songs for Right Pack Radio were written and performed by Meredith Tate. All copyrights remain with her.